हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आर टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक कॉल्ड एज ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर एज वी नो वेरी वेल ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर इज नथिंग बट द इंटर नेटवर्किंग लेयर इन द ओ एस आई रेफरेंस मॉडल विच बेसिकली लाइज इन द मिडल ऑफ द ओ एस आई रेफरेंस मॉडल राइट सो टूडे विल ट्राई टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर इन डिटेल बेसिकली दिस इज जस्ट एन इंट्रोडक्शन टू द ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर सो transport layer is the fourth layer from the bottom in the osr reference model it is responsible for the message delivery from process running in source computer to the process running in the destination computer so what it does it mean basically we will try to understand process to process delivery basically from this diagram so one should understand the transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery now each and every computer runs multiple process or application in that computer let's say multiple applications are running let's say application a to application z so application a in the sending application should communicate with application a only on the receiving computer so this take this is being taken care by the transport layer which is said to be process to process delivery similarly we can say let's say process z is going to communicate with process z only so one should understand that the transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery in the same fashion if you remember the data link layer is responsible for node to node delivery where nodes are nothing but just similar like a router or any networking devices which lies in the network and which are responsible for forming an internet where internet is nothing but inter networking while if you look network layer is responsible for host to host delivery we can say host to host delivery is nothing but it is responsible for the data is reaching or not from sending device to the yes receiving device so this diagram plays a very very important role to understand how the different delivery take place so one should understand just to summarize the data link layer deals with node to node delivery network layer deals with host to host delivery while the transport layer deals with process to process delivery the transport layer does not perform any function in the intermediate nodes yes from the diagram also we can make it out the transport layer is not responsible in the intermediate network but it is just responsible for process to process delivery it is active only in the end system now what is basically node to node delivery host to host delivery and process to process delivery we have already understood from this diagram one more important part to be noted over here that the data link layer is basically responsible for delivery of frames within node to node delivery so we know very well data link layer basically deals with the frame format network layer deals with packet format and transport layer deals with the segment format that's what they have said over here that it is responsible for node to node delivery it is going to deal with the frames while the network layer is responsible for delivering of packets or datagrams between the two host while the transport layer is basically responsible for delivery of segments from process to process where we can say process is nothing but the applications which are running in the sending computer as well as receiving computer now going to the next point here comes the uh, encapsulation of the data how basically encapsulation take place the data which is coming from the uppermost layer this is the transport layer let's say the uppermost layer to the transport layer is nothing but the data which is coming from the user let's say from the application layer so data which is coming from the application layer towards the transport layer so here the encapsulation take place where we know very well encapsulation is nothing but appending of the header so in transport layer one should remember the appending of the header is nothing but the tcp header what do you mean by tcp we will try to understand in the further lectures so here the encapsulation take place the application layer data is been encapsulated with the tcp header right at the transport layer now whole this thing which is forming a segment this whole thing is forming basically a segment of the data now this segment of the data is passed on to the next layer which is nothing but the network layer so at the network layer basically this data is going to be appended with the ip header so here again the encapsulation take place so one should remember at the network layer ip header is being 
appended. Now the whole data which is forming is nothing but like a packet. Now this data goes to the data link layer and when it goes to the data link layer, yes, the header which is being appended is going to be said to be frame header because you know very well data link layer deals with the frame. So here we can talk this part is nothing but TCP payload, this part is nothing but IP payload while this part turns out to be data link layer payload. Now we will try to understand a very important topic called as transport layer design issues. So what are basically the transport layer design issues? We know very well transport layer delivers the message from one process to the another process running on two different hosts. Thus it has to perform number of functions to ensure that the accurate delivery of the message take place. So basically all these functions the transport layer has to look after. So these are the design issues of that. So satisfying these functions or achieving this function is nothing but the transport layer design issues. So the first function or the design issue is nothing but establishing, maintaining and releasing the connection. So whenever one station has to send the data to the receiving station, it first has to establish the connection, maintain the connection and releasing the connection. So basically this function is very very important which is being considered under transport layer. We will talk about it just like if you want to establish a call with someone. So how do we establish a call? Basically we dial that number, right? Then we talk, basically we maintain a call by having a conversation with that people. And once the conversation or the talk is being done, we basically terminate the call which is called as releasing the connection. So whenever we talk with someone or whenever we have some uh, exchange of uh, thing on a call, what do we do? Basically we establish it, we maintain it and then we releasing it, right? So this is very very important the addressing right addressing is a major part because we should know the phone number of the another person with whom we want to talk so this is something called as addressing right and we should have some data to be sent it to, a, uh, to that person so basically the data transfer flow control error control is also very important right flow control is nothing but which deals with matching the speed of sending device with the receiving device and whatever the data is being sent to the receiving device it should be accurate without any error it is being taken care by the error control. While sending the data it should make sure that uh, congestion do not take place in the network so finally we need the congestion control. So all these functions are very very important and which are taken care by the transport layer and these have been termed as design issues. So we will first try to understand what is basically establishing, maintaining and releasing the connection. The transport layer establishes, maintains and releases end to end transport connection on the request of the upper layers. Establishing connection involves allocation of buffers, storing user data, synchronizing the sequence number of the packet. Connection is released on the request of the upper layer. So basically the connection is established by the upper layer as well as it is being released by the upper layer only. Because one who starts the connection has to release the connection. Next point is addressing. In order to deliver the message from one process to another, an addressing scheme is required. Several processes may be running on a system at a time. In order to identify the correct process out of various running process, transport layer uses an addressing scheme called as port number. So it's very important to be noted down over here. Transport layer deals with a port number which is of 16 bit long which is being assigned to different processes which are running in a computer. So each process has a specific port number associated with it. So here is nothing but an example of well-known ports which are used by a PCP. So one should just uh, remember at least three to four port numbers, standard well-known port numbers during your examination. Coming to the next point which is nothing but the data transfer. So we have concerned with two points which is establishing, maintaining and releasing of connection. We have concerned with, we have talked about addressing. Now the next point is nothing but the data transfer. So whatever the data which is being transferred through the transport layer, Basically it is a user data which is broken down into smaller units and attached with TPDU and we know very well what is TPDU? Transport Protocol Data Unit and that TPDU is handed over the network layer for delivery of this destination. And what the what is the important part which is concerned with the header is nothing but the port number, sequence number, acknowledgement number and the checksum. So basically port number deals with the addressing part. Sequence number and the acknowledgement number is nothing but establishing, maintaining and releasing of connection. And the checksum part is concerned with the error control. 
So how basically data transfer take place? While sending the data from sender to the receiver, it's very very important that sending and receiving processes may not write or read the data at the same speed. So please try to understand the sender and the receiver may not have the same speed of exchange of the data. So to achieve this thing, to manage the uh, difference between them, we need a concept called as a buffer. So as per their speed or as per their need, they can basically access the data without any changes. So they are they have maintained a buffer because the sending and receiving process may not have the same speed. So one should remember why there is a need of a buffer because the speed are not same. So sending process write the data into the buffer, the receiving process read the data from the receiving buffer. So here they have shown the data in different format. Let's say the data which is being sent is being indicated by red color. The data which is not being sent is shown by the gray color. The data which is not read over here is being shown in red color. I hope you are getting, getting this thing. So what to remember over here? Since the speed of the sending and receiving process is not same, there is a need of something called as buffer. So this is an explanation which we can see. Next is nothing but the flow control. One should understand why there is a need of a flow control because we know very well the speed of both sending and receiving process are not same. So to match this speed, we require something called as a flow control. Now one more important point to be noted over here. The flow control at the transport layer is performed end to end rather than node to node. Because you know very well, basically the flow control function is also being performed by the data link layer. Now again this function is being repeated in the transport layer. So one should remember over here, the flow control which is performed in the net data link layer is nothing but the flow control between node to node. While the flow control function which is performed under the transport layer is nothing but yes performed at the end to end which is nothing but process to process. And to achieve this flow control basically transport layer uses a sliding window protocol to perform the flow control. The next point to be noted over here is nothing but the error control. So one should remember transport layer provides end to end error control. So one should understand again this function is being repeated at the transport layer which was the function at the data link layer. So basically data link layer deals with error control which is at the node to node while the transport layer performs the error control which is at the end to end. So what basically the transport layer deals with the error, error due to damage bits, error due to non-delivery of TPDU where TPDU is nothing but transport protocol data units, error due to duplicate delivery of TPDU, error due to delivery of TPDU to wrong destination. So all those errors which are being come across in the network due to some of the other reasons is being handled by the transport layer. And the next point uh, over here after the transport layer is nothing but yes the finally the error congestion control. So what is basically the congestion control is? So congestion control one should understand that congestion control is nothing but due to the last point to be discussed is congestion control. Now transport layer also handles with the congestion control in the network. Several different congestion control algorithms are basically uh, used under the transport layer to avoid the congestion. We'll try to understand this in the later videos, right? So one should understand basically the transport layer is nothing but the internet working layer, right? Just to quickly revise. One should understand that the transport layer deals with various functions and it is being treated as uh, basically the transport layer design issues. It may come as establishing, maintaining and releasing of connection. Uh, the second point to be noted is addressing, right? It deals with the port number and we know very well port number is of 16 bit. It also deals with the data transfer, how basically the data transfer takes place. Then it deals with basically the flow control to match the speed of high speed transmitter with the slow speed receiver. It deals with error control and it also deals with the congestion control, right? And finally, one should also understand the transport layer basically deals with process to process delivery as compared to the other layers. If you know, data link layer deals with node to node delivery while network layer deals with, yes, host to host delivery. One more important point to be noted over here, the very, very two important protocols which comes under the transport layers are nothing but TCP and UDP, which we'll discuss uh, in the later lectures, right? So with this, I end this uh, topic. Thank you for watching.